Thank you, Michael, and a very experienced insight and information there to share with us. I'm going to move now to. Uh, oh, sorry. Actually, are we going to? Yeah. Going to move to uh, an international perspective, an EU perspective from Andrew Cunningham, uh, the European Monitoring Centre for Drugs and Drug Addiction, who has presented to us at each assembly meeting so far. And Andrew's going to give us an EU perspective on some of the issues around supply. Uh, and from Lisbon, you're very welcome, Andrew, and thanks for joining us. Uh, and we will give you a prompt just as you have a, a minute or so to go. So very welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Super, super. Okay, good morning. Um, and thank you for the invitation to speak here and make a contribution on behalf of the Drugs Agency to the fourth meeting of the Citizens, Citizens Assembly. I've got to say, I think it's a great idea and well done for the initiative. I work at the EU Drugs Agency down here in Lisbon where I'm in charge of the part of the agency that deals with drug markets, drug-related crime, and drug supply reduction. So what we're here to discuss today is really my bread and butter. As you all know, the drugs issue is a complicated one. We've just heard about that from uh, Michael. It's also a political one. Uh, people have a diverse range of views about drugs. And what is clear is that there is a huge cost to society related to drugs. And that's why we have an international control system in place since the 60s to protect the health of users. But drug markets are just that, they are markets. They're governed by rules of supply and demand, but they don't work in the same way as normal markets. The profits involved are huge, but then so are the risks for the people involved in the market. Understanding the dyna dynamics of drug markets is difficult because, of course, it's largely a hidden phenomenon. We think about the drug market in the broadest sense when we study the drug market here in, in Lisbon, from the production through trafficking, distribution, which can be in person or online, and also all the way through to the consumption by users. But we also think in terms of the processes from the growing of illicit drug crops like coca bush for cocaine grown in Latin America, or the opium poppies for heroin production grown in Afghanistan. Or when we think about the synthetic drugs which are produced here in Europe uh, in illicit laboratories, these uh, chemicals are imported from places like China. And we also think of the, in terms of the people involved, and these can be the farmers growing the crops or the people who are paid to go into ports under the cover of darkness to extract bags of cocaine from shipping containers, for example. The drug market is actually a huge, complex, illicit global industry. To get an idea of the drug market in Europe, we monitor lots of things. We have data on the prevalence of drug use, the prices of drugs, the purities of drugs at wholesale level, consumer level, data about drugs seized, and data on drug law offences. We have data from wastewater analyses, many, many different sources. And our job here in Lisbon at the at the EU Drugs Agency, is to put all that data together and see what it tells us. Using tools such as the European Web Survey on Drugs, we can assess how frequently people are using drugs and how much they're using each time. And when we combine these data, we can come up with estimates of the size of the drug market. Michael mentioned one of them for cocaine in his last uh, remarks there. That's to say how many tons of those drugs are consumed by the users. According to the last estimate, which is a minimum estimate, Euro Europeans spend about 30 billion euro on drugs. 30 billion euro. That's if you can just imagine that, it's equivalent to the money earned by 1 million people earning 30,000 per year. It's a lot of money. The largest drug market in the EU is, of course, cannabis, which makes up about 40% of the market. And I'm sure you've already discussed about the developments taking place mainly in the Americas, where recreational cannabis use is now permitted. There seems to be a discourse going on in mainstream media about uh, what's going, across, uh, going on across the Atlantic that suggests that you know, everybody's taking cannabis. Everybody, especially young people, is smoking cannabis. In fact, well, cannabis is for sure the most common drug used in Europe. The prevalence of use in, on the whole is, on average, uh, around 8%. So, in other words, 92% of the adult population are not using cannabis. 
So even in high prevalence countries like the Czech Republic and the Netherlands, prevalence is 20%. So 80% of the adults in those country, countries are not using cannabis. This, of course, goes against the narrative that we read on an almost daily basis from news uh, outlets. So it's like there's a normalization of cannabis use that we read about that influences attitudes about drug use and demand can be created through that. Another component of the European drug market is the portion that's not consumed by users, but is seized by law enforcement. Think about all of those tons that you read about when the police and customs services are seizing those drugs. If we take the example of cocaine, in 2021, 1,400 tons of cocaine were produced globally. We know that from the UNODC uh, estimates. We estimate that 160 of those tons are consumed in Europe by consumers. And in that year, 300 tons were seized by law enforcement. So that's just short of 500 tons of the global cocaine production output destined for the European drug market. That's more than one third of global co cocaine production. So Europe represents a significant global market for cocaine. If we think for a minute about the involvement of organized crime in the business, we should look to the best source of information, the last European series organized crime threat assessment released by Europol in 2021. You can download it from the internet and read it for yourself. And the subtitle is A Corrupting Influence, the Infiltration and Undermining of Europe's Economy and Society by Organized Crime. The SOCTA explains how the trade in drugs dominates serious organized crime in the EU in terms of the number of criminals and criminal networks involved, as well as the vast criminal profits generated. Just over Much a minute, violence, Andrew, sorry to interrupt. Just yeah. over a minute, please. About a minute and a half. Sure. Yeah, much of that violence is associated with serious organised crime is related to the trade in drugs. And of course, um, the people involved in the drugs trade are members of society. They're living among us. You may know somebody who makes a living from the international drugs trade. They choose to do it because they earn a living from it. They don't tend to be too concerned about the negative impacts that we've mentioned, like the health of users, the extreme violence that's just been mentioned, the impoverishment of those farmers and communities in Bolivia or Afghanistan, or the devastating impact that coca production has on the environment, for example, in Colombia. Like all people involved in any supply chain, they're in it to make as much money as possible. Um, so why am I telling you all this? I guess the point for me is to convey the message that what you're here to discuss is not a simple matter. There are big stakes for those involved. There are no easy solutions. If we look to what's going on in Afghanistan just now, the Taliban have banned the cultivation of opium poppies. Farmers are facing a humanitarian crisis because their income has been cut off, and this is leading to migration. So it's, it's a complicated thing. If drugs were legal, the people involved in the drug trade wouldn't just say, oh, well, that was good while it lasted. I think I'll go off and train as a plumber or an electrician or run away and join the circus. The flow of illicit cannabis is not stopped in the US or Canada. To be able to take the money out of the hands of organized crime, which is often one of the stated aims of cannabis legalization, has not been such an easy task. To think it would have been is either disingenuous or naive. Andrew, so, ladies and gentlemen, I have to ask you to finish up. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just finishing up. Yeah. So, I mean, I leave you with those thoughts that, you know, it's, it's a complicated issue. Um, you've got a lot to discuss and I hope I've been able to contribute to your thought process. Thank you very basis. much, Andrew, and thank you to your...